That's that is tough. I like TCU. There, when, when I look at TCU, because you have so many great teams in Texas. Of course, the other non unnamed Texas team not a part of the conversation, but TCU <laughs> <is> certainly <laughs> TCU doing doing the job. Uh, I, I really want to see uh, TCU do much more, maybe head to a finals and possibly could win it all because they've been on the rise for at least two to three years. And uh, that's, that's where I see uh, TCU really hanging out. Horned Frogs not getting as much conversation surrounding how good of a club they really are. They have a chance to put it on display tonight. Yeah, they do. And this is going to be big for them. Also, like I mentioned, there's another elimination game going on tonight as well with LSU-Oregon State. Now, Oregon State... This has been a very interesting playoffs, a very interesting College World Series season. Their star pitcher, who I believe he had a .76 ERA or something crazy like that, um, he ends up not being able to pitch. Uh, I believe that was a choice that he made. Um, and I talked about this on a past show with allegations that he that he had. Um, but is Oregon State still the same team with losing him? Obviously, they made it this far. But are they the same team? If the game was on the line, could they still win it? You know, when I when I look at those allegations, it takes a lot of win out of yourself. And as an individual, as a student athlete, those allegations are huge. They change and basically turn the tide right. of momentum. They turn the tide of how you execute. Without a guy like that on the mound, I don't know that Oregon State has enough to beat out LSU, LSU playing very, very good ball right now. And I think as far as a pitching duel without him in the lineup, we're going to see LSU taking advantage of Oregon State. And I see LSU uh, pulling this upset tonight. Okay. All right. So we're looking at LSU versus who's the other team that you're that you're picking? Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say TCU, okay. tears up Florida. Okay, that's right. kind of what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> that's my upset <laughs> pick for tonight. Okay, um, so with the College World Series, I think what a lot of people want to see, a lot of people that watch baseball, a lot of people that are tuning into the College World Series, probably the biggest question that they have is. Which one of these players can possibly make it to the pros? At least that's what part of what I'm thinking. What are some guys that you know of that are potential Major League Baseball prospects or players? Well, you have, oh, man. You, there, there's so many guys right now that I look at. Uh, and no, no better would you suspect one guy getting into the to the next lineup. And don't forget, everybody, Major League Baseball draft just happened. It just happened. Uh, Pirates picking up a lot of guys, a lot of teams in, in need of your rotational players, the, the sluggers, the pitchers, the guys with a very low ERA. And when I look at the College World Series as a whole, I like a lot of them. There are almost way too many of them. I mean, well over 200 guys that could be entering the Major League Baseball system. But when I look at guys who have a serious desire and drive, and they've shown so much more, I look at a guy like Hunter Green, Brendan McKay out of Vanderbilt. You have Kyle Wright, who's a right-hander. He's, these guys are putting everything they have on display. They're making their presence known. I think those three guys are going to be my top three looking into uh, headed into a major league baseball career to do great things with with low ERAs, and what really helps is that when you're part of an organization that is at its best, Oregon State, that you know one of the top college rankings, forty nine and four, North Carolina forty seven and two. When you're part of those types of teams, winning is almost a criteria. You have scouts that are looking at you, not only that, but they're looking at your team. Yeah. And they recognize that you're part of that. They they look at your odd base percentage. They look at your attitude, your mentality. Uh, how friendly are you? Are you personable enough? If you were to attend an all-star game or even chosen 
on an elite scale to get into an all-star game that you have the likability, the market bill. I was talking about that on Friday Night Lights yesterday on Ice Sports Radio about how, you know, guys that are trying to get the nod, they're occurring, you know, they're occurring guys who are hot and those that are not. And the ones that you really look at are the ones that are hot to get to the next level, at least at all-star level and have that on your resume. But those would be my top three guys. Some other guys that really come to mind, Ben, is like Jesse Berardi out of Steve Johns, Adam Hazley out of Virginia, Brian Miller out of North Carolina, uh, Stuart Fairchild out of Wake Forest, Demon Deacons. I, I look for, for these guys to really make an impact, and scouts are already out there. They're already looking at you. So if you, all you need to do is turn your head, you'll see a scout and stand with a pair of binoculars. Hopefully it doesn't look like a tourist. But <laughs> <a> binoculars, <laughs> stand. <laughs> and he's looking at you. He's making his notations. And uh, probably making some phone calls, depending on how hot you are, not only from being in the outfield, but being a part of that batting or pitching rotation. So yep. these guys are, are, are really hot right now. So I look for them to essentially become a part of the Major League roster at some point, hopefully in their early career. They spend enough time in the college system to understand that you know this isn't the NBA. This isn't one guy spending one year in the system. Baseball players predominantly will spend their four years out in the respective college and then make it to the majors, uh, unlike the NBA, which can, you can play one year and end up on an NBA team, and hopefully uh, you'll prosper. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, that's got to be all of these kids' dreams, obviously, is to make it into the Major League Baseball up to a big league club. And there's so many names of guys who have – some surpass college, some still go to college, and it's a tough decision, I think, for these young kids to make because you want the best. You want the best for your career, but if you got a shot to go to the pros, I mean, you gotta you gotta take it. You gotta run with it. Um, and so, what's what's your thoughts on going pro straight from high school or coming to college? Do you still see a value of these young guys going to college? Look, value, value takes time. I, it, it really depends on the individual. It depends on the student athlete. I've interviewed a ton of them in the football system. And one thing that I've learned about these guys from end to end is that they have to have the mentality, a winning mentality, because if they fail to have a winning mentality, they can't take that throughout their one year at UCLA like we've seen in Lonzo Ball or uh, guys like, like Kobe Bryant exiting Marion High School. You know, student athletes need to have a certain mindset, but it has to be a mature mindset. Once they play through, once they show that they can compete at the next level, they'll be a superstar and will show that, and that's why teams draft them regardless as to whether or not they're you know one year in college or exiting high school, like those respected players, you really look at the mentality, the attitude, and a lot of other great intangible, intangible things that make them a winner at the next level. As far as the value is concerned, it's all about the individual. If you show value initially, that value will be shown throughout from the beginning of your career to the end of your career in the per, in the profession you're in, Major League Baseball, uh, NBA, and, and maybe even the NFL, uh, which is a really tough market to, to do that in. But Major League Baseball, you have to have the winning mentality and be able to show your maturity while you're playing in order to not only become a friend amongst your coworkers, that's really what they are, uh, to making sure that you're marketing yourself correctly, you have the right people around you, and you're mature enough to make those decisions in order to help flourish as one of the top players in your respective position on your team and or in Major League Baseball. Definitely. And we got Big John B in the building, in the chat room. Thank you for tuning in. He says, what up, folk? He also says, two from my town got picked as high schoolers. And, man, I was a baseball kid growing up. I was thinking of, you know, all those moments. You're like batting ninth in the bottom of the ninth with two outs. You know, I was one of those kids that wanted to play Major League Baseball so bad. And I think a lot of kids have that dream. And being picked from high school, I can't even imagine what that feeling would be like to, to get your name called. So, Rudy, what's your uh, favorite baseball team, or what's the team that you follow the most? Well, I, um, 
just kind of interesting. You're talking about how you know you wanted to be part of the Major League Baseball team. I was on the championship baseball team in the Pony Colt League when I was when I was in my younger days. Not that I'm old or anything, but back in the day, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was in right field. Some people say I was stuck there, or literally in right field, but no, I truly was in right field. That was a position for me. Uh, I have aspirations of getting to the majors. Not really. All I wanted to do was was play and do my best. And as I've gotten older, obviously in my older years, not to date myself, but the team that I support, the team that I follow, and uh, as a matter of fact, they, they follow back. Are the Pittsburgh Pirates who find themselves in the middle position uh, fighting to uh, stay above 500? That is Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, I, I've had Greg Brown on the show, play by play, uh, and or color for, for the Pirates. And uh, right now, there, there are a lot of things that they have to do right. And uh, sweeping games and sweeping teams that they need to sweep hasn't has not been uh, their cup of tea. Yeah. Um, and I'm a Rangers fan. I grew up in Oakland. I grew up in the Bay Area, so I was I was an A's fan growing up. But before I let you go, tell me about the Rangers. Uh, tell me your real thoughts about what you're thinking. Do can they make the playoffs? Can they creep up on Houston? You know, Houston had a 50-game winning uh, a winning season for them. It's uh, it, it's going to be tough. Texas Rangers uh, just, I, I don't know, they, they, they rank right up there with L.A. Angels. Why? Because the games are supposed to win, they don't win. The games that they lose are the ones to teams that are sub-500. So when you look at the Texas Rangers right now, they're uh, top Top four, they're ahead of the Yankees, who also seem to be doing very well in the American League. Texas Rangers, four to one. Uh, I, in all fairness, can they catch the Astros? Probably not. They're over 50 plus games right now, but they can make it competitive. If they can stay within, and I mean circling above 500, they could have a wild card conversation. But look, there's so much baseball to be played right now. It would be, it would be remiss. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that that the Angels are in contested. They're right down the street from where I live, almost literally. Uh, but the Texas Rangers could have a conversation. They need to do a lot better with the rotation, put the right relievers in the right order, shake up the set. Don't forget the trade line right. is upon us exactly. the next couple of weeks. So, so the Texas Rangers could find themselves in a situation where they get some guys out that don't quite fit and or have not produced. Going to the Pirates for half a minute, the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, I said this earlier this season, I mentioned this yesterday on Friday Night Lights on Ice Sports Radio, that if Andrew McCutcheon does not produce, he can be cut and he can be traded. And I believe that to be the case with some guys on the Texas Rangers roster as well. The guys who, you know, aren't getting a very good at bat, slugging percentages down, on, on, on base percentages also down. So I, I look for the Rangers to really take a bite out of, you know, certain guys who aren't producing, either send them back to AAA or get them on the trade train out of town. Definitely. And that's going to be the biggest thing, I think, for the Rangers. Are are they buyers or sellers? They've been buyers for quite a while now, and I definitely I love what J- John Daniels, the GM, I love what he does. I love his trade vernacular, um, if I would say, and I think he is gonna have a tough time this trade deadline because you don't want to trade you know you don't want to trade some of the top players but if it comes to that point i'm thinking everybody is going to be available obviously except uh, probably beltre who's up there in age but you darvish may end up be leaving so there's a lot there's a lot a lot going on with these rangers uh can't wait to see what's going to happen because it's always suspenseful with these rangers so. Yeah, the, the, the Texas Rangers in, in, in this huge AL, AL West, I call it the wild, wild West because everybody is piggybacking off one another right now. I'm worried about if somebody can catch the Mariners or not. That's yeah. what I'm really looking for. They're doing, they're playing extremely well. Angels are right there. Rangers are right there. So if the Rangers want to, want to jump the Angels, they really need to start winning some games and win sets of games in order to knock the Angels out of the third position in the AL West. But, again, this is a long season. This stuff is not built overnight. It's going to take a lot of work from everybody on that Rangers team. And, again, because of the trade deadline, I see them getting some more value if they select the right guys to fit their system. 
uh, along with the draftees that the Gur just because Major League Baseball draft just happened. If anybody forgot that, enough. <laughs> right. <laughs>